there were profound things that linked people north and south. They spoke the same language. They were overwhelmingly Christian and Protestant. They shared a revolutionary heritage that all of them treasured, the founders and the creation of this republic that gave people a voice in their own government and also gave them the chance to rise economically. So you have powerful things uniting and you have a range of things seemingly separating. There were things that divided people, the most obvious of them related to the institution of slavery, especially whether slaveholders would be allowed to take their enslaved people into the federal territories and therefore expand the empire of slavery. Huge differences there and other differences relating to the economy, far more industrial in the northern states than in the Confederate states, the huge cash crop economy of the, of the southern states. The importance of perception especially comes into play when you look at the range of stereotypes that each side applied to the other. People in the free states looking south saw a violent, lazy, poorly educated population that was made brutal by the presence of slavery, with a despised poor white class that was ruled by an oligarchic slaveholding class. People in the southern states looking north, uh, in contrast, saw a grasping, money-oriented people who didn't care about family and really didn't even care about religion, who wanted to meddle in everyone else's affairs instead of looking after theirs. The, the worst thing you could do to a Yankee, believed many in the south, was take money away from that person. And the interesting thing to me is that many of those cliches continued long after the Civil War, and some of them even survived today. What I think the crucial question is, is had they reached a point by 1860 where they believed that they had become two civilizations? And I think the answer to that question is yes, they had come to a position, not everyone, but many people, and the younger you were, the more likely that you would have reached this position. I think young people who'd never known a time when there wasn't great sectional discord they came to expect the worst from the other side and refused to accept anything positive about the other side and feared many elements of what was going on either north or south of the Potomac. And I think that perception, that question of perception, is what set in motion the events that made secession and then eventually war possible in 1860 and 1861. Thanks so much for watching. To see more of what we have to offer, click the videos on the right. And to receive notifications for more cool American history content, click subscribe.